small job getting this beam in the shop, but I've got it in the shop and set up. And the reason why I brought it home is it would be fun to work on it up on site, but it's just too far of a drive and I, it's not realistic for me to go there uh, multiple nights a week. So I brought it home and this being a sill beam, meaning it's one of the bottom foundational beams, it's going to have a lot of joints in it. It'll have the joints in the corner and it'll have the dovetail joints which will support the uh, girders and the floor, the joists. So there's quite a bit of work that goes into this and there'll be a, a two of them be a mirror image. So I'm going to get started on it here and then I can work on it in the evenings. And when I'm finished with this one I can go cut another one and bring it back and work on it also. So I'll kind of uh, bring you along. I, I'm not, a, a, not at all an expert on timber framing and I don't know any more than what I've read from all the books I could get my hands on at the library. And I've put together kind of a basic set of tools, which I'll share with you in a minute. Uh, but the nice thing about it is you, you don't need a lot of real specialty tools. A lot of people that have basic carpentry tools are going to have some crossover. There are going to be a few things that you'll need to get, and uh, we'll go over those. But the first thing we need to do on this is to square the ends and cut it to length. I cut this over, a little over a foot over, so I had some, uh, some room to square it up and and uh, cut it to exact length here in the shop and that's what we'll do. To start I'll show you the tools. Regarding tools, as I've said this is the first timber frame project that I've done so I'm just now putting together a basic set. There are a lot of things that I don't have yet and I don't really have need of right now but as I acquire them I'll be sharing them with you. But I've got a good start here and you'll find a lot of the tools that you have for typical just general post and beam construction are going to apply squares, tape measures, saws, that sort of thing. There are a few specialty tools though that most guys are not going to have that are you are going to need to get. And the foundation or the good starting point are high, really high quality framing uh, mortise chisels. Like you see here, these are excellent mortising chisels made by a company in Sheffield, England called for, uh, Robert Sorby. And you can buy these online. There are a couple manufacturers, some local ones. There's one in Idaho, I forget the name, but make top-notch timber framing chisels and with good steel, and this is what you want. You're going to want essentially three chisels. You're going to want a one inch, an inch and a half like this, and a two inch. The two inch is going to be your primary tool for cutting mortises, tenon and mortise, at, at, because in softwood they're going to be two inch, and in hardwood if you're using oak, uh, or something similar that you're going to have one inch, but I find that they both are, they're very nice to have. In addition to your chisels, you're going to need a mallet. Some people prefer all wood. Um, I kind of like this one, although I've never used a wood one, but it was recommended to me. It's a hard polymer, and it just gives a little less shock, and is also is going to be a lot nicer on the back of your chisels because you're going to be using this for paring and cleaning things up. In addition to the chisels, it's nice to have a small axe for cleaning up and knocking off big chunks. You might be able to uh, have a little better success with a little wider axe than this one, but this one seems to be appropriate. Any small, good quality axe or hatchet that's sharp is going to work. Another thing, tool that was pretty much standard for carpenters throughout the years and have kind of been replaced with the speed square is just your typical square. This originally was designed for timber framing. That's why we have the inch and a half on one side and the two inch. Uh, this I have found to be the most valuable uh, for laying, doing layout and measuring and, and keeping things square and true. I really uh, find that to be useful. It's going to be nice to have a small combination square and included with this is what they call a scribe. What I've been finding is that the pencil, regular carpenter's pencil, is not precise enough for the layout. Uh, it's just the, the mark is too wide. So what I've done is I've, I've found it had better luck to use the little scribe and then maybe do a little fill in with a pencil to highlight it. Another tool you're going to want is a good quality crosscut saw. Uh, whether it's a Stanley Shark, those are good saws, or something like the Shark Saw, which is a Japanese pole saw, this works really well too and is easy to control. In addition to the chisels, I forgot to mention, there's another tool that's very useful. Uh, this is called a slick. And typically, the, this is going to be like a very, it's a very large chisel, as you can see. It's over two feet long, and it's going to be three to four inches wide. This is going to be for 
for doing a big work for cleaning up, shaving off bark, uh, flattening out areas, and they need to be very, very sharp. This in particular, this one in particular, I got from my bought from my neighbor, and it's uh, over 160 years old, so it's really a cool, a cool item. I think it even has the original handle on it. Another tool that's going to be pretty essential, and the one that I have is not a very good one, is a, just a small drill guide. When we're drilling our holes for our pegs, they need to be straight. And it's almost impossible for most people to drill a straight hole through wood. You, you lean or you angle a little bit. So this will help you guide through that. There are a lot better ones than this. This is just the one that I'm, I'm using until I'm able to upgrade. And if you're going to be working from rough or hewing your own logs, like some people do, uh, a set of, I'm kind of just starting to put these tools together. This is kind of an interesting one I've also got from my neighbor. It's an axe that's uh, for hewing logs. And as you can see, the handle is offset here. And it's flat on the backside and very broad and very sharp. And what this is used for is if you're hand hewing uh, a round log into a square shape, you will walk, walk alongside of it, as you can see right here, and you will swing this and knock off the round portion and flatten that out. And the reason for the offset handle is to keep your hands uh, away from coming in contact with the log. But very, uh, a very cool item. And I see you can find these things on, on eBay. Uh, so they're still available. But very beautiful tool. So that, there are other things that I'm not showing you. The drill bits and such. We'll go into that in more detail later as I acquire them. But this is really all you need for a start. Uh, I've uh, not... Uh, maybe a chainsaw, but I've I've not uh, found been wanting for anything and have been moving along in the project. So this ought to take care of uh, the basic needs to get started. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that when I checked these for square, these being cut with the chainsaw mill, they are very square, uh, not perfectly square, but close enough, uh, square than I thought they would be. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine which side we're going to pull all of our dimensions off of. So this, I've crowned this board, meaning I've got the, most boards will have, a, or beams have a bow in them, and I've crowned it so, so it's up. And remember when you're timber framing, be careful what you, how, what, how you write on these things. This, this particular sill beam will be buried, so it won't matter, but when you get into the, the other beams, they're going to be all exposed in the building, make sure you are careful what you and how you write on them with. So I have determined which is the crown, meaning up with the arrow, and then I'm also going to, once I get the squared, I'll put in a little arrow here signifying that all my dimensions are pulled off of this corner on this side. So when I'm making measurements, I'm consistent. And then we'll square the edges. All right, book. It's very important uh, to get books on this because there's a lot of uh, a lot of there's a lot to know, 
and this will save you a, a lot of time. And I've weeded through a lot of the books. Go to the library, and I would recommend you get these too. If you guys, this is going to take a long time. If you guys want to, to build a timber frame outbuilding or utility shed or cabin or whatever, this is something you can do from home. You can do it in your own shop or garage. You can put all the pieces together, and you can take it out there, get some friends, and assemble it. So even if it takes you two or three years, it's uh, something that you could, you could be doing now. And these books would be really good. The first one is The Timber Framers Workshop, and the author is Steve Chappell. I like this book because it has a lot of the... I, I like where he's coming from, uh, the reason for timber framing. Um, the, I like his ideas on the pride of workmanship and craftsmanship. It's kind of interesting. And the other one, which is very practical, is the timber framing book by Stuart Elliott, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, and Eugene Wallace. It's a very beautifully illustrated book. There are a lot of pictures. Um, I find the illustrations to be very clear. And it's actually, they're both of them are very interesting to read. Um, oftentimes, a lot of people kind of check out on technical manuals, but there's more, there's more to it than these. I, I like, there, there's kind of, they tell a story of the author and... They're just kind of interesting. But the thing I like most about the second book is it has it has a beginner project in the back, which is this 12 by 16 timber frame. So it's a 12 by 16, that you're calling it a shed, and it's got a 12-12-pitch 12, 12, 12 pitch, 12, 12 pitch roof. And it's got the beam schedule laid out here so you can you can know exactly first floor, second floor, everything you need. So you can you could go out and buy these materials like six by tens, two sixteens, two twelves. That's what I have here is one one of those, and put all these together. And then once you get that that scheduled, then it's all laid out here in all of the different types of joints. And the preceding chapters will tell you how to do these. And then it actually has the exact cut sheets. You know, for example, this here is the 16 foot. This is the, the this is the beam that I have right up here on the sawhorses, and you can see all the dovetails and the um, uh, tenon joints on the ends and all the dimensions, and it's very straightforward. So this would be a very good place to start.